love y'all. I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out. Before I get going on our video, smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Share the video. Turn on your notifications, and don't forget that I go live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. You can also catch me live every Sunday morning with the Singing OG KQKC Boxing Network at 9 a.m. Central Time. And please join the channel as a member. Drop super chats when you come by the live streams and drop super thanks when you come by the videos to help support the channel and help it grow. The more uh, support that we get, the more time I have to spend, spend making content for y'all. And do not forget about the TKO debate series, man. Hit me up if you want to debate or you want me to host a debate. Knockoutbox86 at yahoo.com is that email. But let's get it cracking. Look, man. David Benavidez is a duck, bro. He a duck. And his daddy is, 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 is a duck. Like, so what's being reported, what I saw, is that David Benavidez is supposedly in negotiations with Avni Hildrum, bro. Avni Yildirim, bro. And on top of that, his daddy is calling for a fight between David Benavidez and Jaime Munguia. Someone explain to me. David Benavidez fans, Jose Benavidez Sr., David Benavidez himself, someone explain to me how fighting Avni Yildirim or fighting Jaime Munguia is a better fight than David Morrell Jr. Hell, Jose Benavidez Sr., David Benavidez's daddy, said that when talking about Jaime Munguia, he said Jaime Munguia almost lost his last fight, but, it's a, but he got the knockdown in the 12th round to save himself and he thinks that his style fits well with David Benavidez. What he really means is he thinks his son can whoop his ass and that's an easy ass fight. And if you're you're admitting that he all, he would have lost the fight if not by a knockdown in the 12th round, you're admitting that his performance was trash. So you want to fight Jaime Munguia who got one fight at 168 coming off a trash performance against 40 year old Bro, Sergey Devrianchenko is pushing 40. Sergey Devrianchenko himself had never fought at 168. He been in wars with Triple G, Daniel Jacobs, Jamal Charlo put paws on him, Carlos Adamas put paws on him, and then he just had a tough fight, and he was still able to go tooth and nail with Jaime Munguia, and that's who you want your son to fight over David Morrell Jr. What does Jaime Munguia bring to the table that David Morrell Jr. don't bring to the table? Team Benavidez, I tell you, he an easy ass fight for David Benavidez. That's what it is. That's what it is. So they say that. They say that. And then once they say that shit, right? It comes out a day later now, today. That they in negotiations to fight Avni Yildirim in a homecoming fight for David Benavidez in Phoenix, Arizona at the Footprint Center or some shit. The same Avni Yildirim that is absolute garbage. That is like losing the majority of his of his fights recently. The same one that we criticized Canelo for fighting. Because he was coming off of a two and a half year layoff and a loss to Darrell. You about to do the Terrence Crawford. You about to fight somebody who already got their ass whooped by somebody that you done already knocked out, bro. That's a better fight than David Morrell Jr. Meanwhile, David Morrell Jr. Done already signed his shit to fight you. Because he will, that, what people don't know is. Dave Benavidez and Dave Morrell was supposed to fight in September, October. Dave Morrell signed his shit. Dave Benavidez were holding off to get a Canelo fight, rightfully so. But if he didn't get the Canelo fight, him and Dave Morrell were supposed to fight. But Benavidez and them pulled out the fight because 
They feel like Dave Morrell need two or three more fights. He a dangerous opponent. He can really, really fight. He don't have enough fans. What do he bring to the table? I tell you what, he got a secondary belt that'll make you the mandatory in two sanctioning bodies, the WBA and the WBC. Abner Yildirim don't got that. Abner Yildirim got a smaller fan base than David Morrell Jr., bro. And it's not close. Y'all telling on y'all self, man. You telling on yourself and you ducking David Morrell Jr. so that you can fight Abner Yildirim and now try to push for a fight with fucking Jaime Munguia, bro. David Benavidez is turning out to be the opposite of who his fans and who he himself and who his team, his father, his his promoter, he's turned out to be the opposite of who they said he, he was, bro. Smoking mirrors. Everybody dug me. Everybody dug me. Everybody dug me. I want all the smoke. We don't turn down. No phase. He been bringing up 154, 160 pounders his whole career. We used to be like, well, that guy ain't nobody going to fight him. Don't nobody want to fight him. That's a 168. True contender, true competitor. Then he fought the Caleb Plant shit. We like, okay, yeah, he, he finally starting to get the smoke. See, David moving the right way. Then he got an opportunity to keep that momentum. He has an opportunity to fight an even better fight than Caleb Plant and really give himself one of, if not the best, resume at 168 pounds in terms of the level of competition and when he fought him. Because you throw Caleb Plant and Dave Morrell on his resume and he beats them, Come on, bro. That's a damn good resume for anybody, you know, that's really looking at that shit. Because Dave Morrell, bigger talent than Callum Smith. Dave Morrell, far bigger talent than Billy Joe Saunders, who was coming up from a smaller weight class. Dave Morrell, bigger talent than Caleb Plant. So you would have Canelo, Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant. You have David Benavidez, Caleb Plant, and Dave Morrell Jr. That, that Morrell name will give him all the cachet and all the clout that he need. But instead, he won't fight Canelo leftovers, bro. But instead, he want to fight the guy that ducked every champion at 160. Jaime Munguia could have fought Undrive. Nope. He could have fought Charlo. Nope. He could have fought fucking uh, Janabek. Nope. And now you calling for the fight with him. If you David, Mar if you David Benavidez. Because he looked bad in his last fight. Because he's a quote unquote, his style is a good fit for David Benavidez. And you know, Abner Yildirim's style is an even better fit for David Benavidez. That just means you think you can win those fights easy. You're doing the same shit that you criticize Caleb Plant for, and that is you're fighting subpar competition, you're fighting trash ass opponents. Hoping that Canelo will pick me, Canelo, pick me. And you're trying to keep your undefeated record. And now you don't want to take no risk because you don't want to mess up that Canelo Alvarez bag. And yeah, some of y'all are cool with it. We ain't rocking with it. David Benavidez got to do better. I expected more from that young man. And I'm going to stay on your helmet till you fight who we want to see you fight, bro. Canelo is not the end all be all. He ain't the only fighter. David Morrell is ready. You need to fight that young man, bro, and quit running and hiding and fighting subpar competition while you waiting on Canelo Abney yielding. Man, get the f man. I'll catch y'all on the next one, bro. Peace out.